Hello and welcome to Michigan. This is Ali Nisei and I'm here at the San Jose Airport. Just had a, a wonderful morning uh, giving a presentation with the Boston University Dental Alumni and Endo Alumni. It was a wonderful presentation. We talked about a lot of different things. Of course, we also talked about the bioceramic obturation, hydraulic condensation, uh, as opposed to vertical condensation. Of course, as you know, Boston University has been, and Dr. Schilder specifically, has been the father of uh, vertical and thermoplastic gutta percha and vertical condensation or compaction of gutta percha. Uh, he really put the endodontic um, specialty on the map, done a lot of wonderful things for endodontics in terms of uh, improving the perception of its quality and the many things that it could be done. And today I had the pleasure of actually presenting to this group uh, a wonderful uh, and hospitable uh, people. I got myself a nice little Boston hat, which was great, and also a little certificate of uh, um, of attendance, uh, so that was very nice of them. And so we had a conversation, and the question that came up was about the hydraulic pressure presented by hydraulic condensation compared to vertical condensation, and whether that is enough to push the sealer into the lateral canals and various portals of exit. And uh, I wanted to share this case that I did with you. Okay, this is one of the older cases I did in 2009 and shared with this group today, which I think demonstrates the hydraulic condensation technique's ability to create adequate hydraulics to drive sealer into lateral canals. Now, before I show you the case, let me just take an editorial here to explain hydraulic condensation for, what, the millionth time? Okay, uh, in hydraulic condensation, the main hydraulic force is generated through synchronicity which is the act of cementing a closely fitted master cone to a shaped canal. Basically, you mill a canal and get a matched cone for it, and the bioceramic cement fills the gaps in between as the cone goes through the cement during the seating process. This is really no different than many restorative procedures like crown or post cementation, except that here, your post is your gutta percha cone and instead of stopping halfway down the canal or down the route as in the case of a post uh, this is actually extending all the way down to the apex now also the cement is hydrophilic and itself flows better into dental tubules and lateral canals compared to resin po resin cements that are used for posts for example so you achieve synchronicity of fit by either cone fitting or by having an instrumentation system that provides a matching gutta percha cone for its master file, as in this case, the endo sequence system. So this way, you have little space between the cone and dentin, and also you obtain adequate hydraulics as a result of the synchronicity. Now, the space should not be super tight, as some space obviously is important to allow full seating of the gutta percha cone to the apex. If it's way too tight, the hydraulic force uh, would be too much and the cone may hang up high and not achieve full working length because a plug of sealer may get trapped under the cone and have no place to escape and that will hold up the cone and prevent it from fully seating. So you don't want that, but you also don't want to have a very thin cone in a wide canal. So just make sure that your cone fitting in such that you have close proximity to the canal walls, but it isn't super tight to prevent the sealer from escaping up from around it to vent. So you want to have the majority of the canal filled with a gutta percha rather than sealer and to achieve better hydraulics, as well as having a predictable path for retreatment should it be necessary in the future. So this technique uses bioceramics responsibly, but by both controlling length as well as allowing revision. Anyway, the tooth in question here was a symptomatic maxillary canine with a previous root canal that was referred to me by the patient's dentist for an apicoectomy. However, if you look at a radiograph, you can see that the lesion is not directly over the apex and is in fact more on a mesial aspect of the root. Now, whenever you see a lesion like that, you know that an apicoectomy will not work predictably since a retrofill tries to address the problem only at the apex and not laterally. So here we would have to cut the root above the lesion, which uh, would shorten this maxillary canine significantly. 
and is therefore not a good solution. Therefore, I discussed the option of revision as the best approach with this patient, even though the original root canal wasn't really that old. The patient accepted the treatment plan, and then I proceeded to open and access the crown and gain length through the apex by removing the gutta percha. Now, I have a whole protocol for retreatment here. I could tell you that there was infection inside the root canal as the gutta percha being removed appeared all infected and, uh, you know, pigmented. I went on to enlarge the canal to a very large size and did thorough negative pressure irrigation and finally fitted a size 55 BC cone in these canals. The radiograph shows enlargement of the canal to a wider diameter that ensures adequate removal of the biofilm compared to the original cleaning and shaping, which was apparently inadequate to remove the entire biofilm. Now, after this infection, I proceeded to inject some of the BC sealer in the canal with the aim of filling only the coronal half of the canal um, and then planning on pushing the sealer down to the apex. I decided to take a radiograph of this and this which is called the advanced technique which is basically injection uh, requires that you have a microscope so you don't end up injecting too much and too little. The goal is to inject here only in the upper half and uh, during an x-ray, I demonstrate the sealer injection, which is uh, actually a little bit longer than halfway down the canal. Uh, but more importantly, the x-ray shows that just by passive injection of this hydrophilic cement, due to these properties, the hydrophilic property of the sealer, and without e any hydraulic force, the sealer has already moved into some lateral canals adjacent to the lesion. So I then went on and push the sealer to the apex using a file, which is an important step if you inject only and limit it to the coronal half, and then went on to slowly cement the coated BC cone that I had pre-fitted to full length. I confirmed full length seating by exposing another radiograph that shows the mere cementation of this cone, this master cone, through this mass of sealer cement, created enough hydraulics to push the sealer into several lateral canals. Here, the combination of a hydrophilic cement like BC sealer and the gutta percha acting as a condenser itself, the cone itself acting as a condenser, was all I needed to fill this additional anatomy. Now here, since the BC cone is just a rigid cone than the standard gutta percha, putting pressure on the cone at the orifice level and then pressing it with a condenser will transfer the hydraulic pressure down the root so that the master cone itself becomes an extension of your plugger. In this technique, as opposed to warm vertical condensation, the gutta percha is your condenser and the bioceramic filler acts like a thermoplastic gutta percha itself. Actually, I think you could probably think of this technique as cold vertical condensation. By the way, if you have room around an oval canal, you can insert additional conformation cones to fill up the space. The key is having proper synchronicity with your main cone, which used to be called cone fitting, but we re refer to it now as synchronicity since it's matched with the master file and it's prepared through the process of milling using the file. In the case of the endosequence system, the master cone is coated and silenated with biceramic particles that allows bonding of the biceramic cement to the cone as well as to the dental walls. And that's creating a better seal. The synchronicity also creates a better hydraulics for displacing the sealer. Here, the two-year recall shows complete healing of the lesion and confirmation that the adequate cleaning and disinfection inside the main root canal combined with obturation, with hydraulic condensation, with a bioceramic cement was adequate to get full healing and regeneration of the periodontal ligament in this particular case. Now, I wanted to show this a little bit better, so I'm using a resin block designed for thermoplastic obturation, but I'm going to fill it with hydraulic condensation. After a fitted cone has uh, been selected for this canal, in this case being a uh, size uh, 404504 uh, BC cone, I inject first some bioceramic filler in the coronal half of the root canal. And then what I would be doing normally is be pushing it down with a sealer, but I just want to show you how the condensation and the placement of the cone through this mass creates adequate hydraulics to push 
the sealer forward ahead of the cone and into the lateral canals. And as you can see, the slow action creates enough hydraulics to push the biceramic cement into the lateral canals as well as into this widespread apical fin in this block. I, I think this demonstration really clearly shows the hydraulics and the effect of obturation that you can get using this technique compared to the standard thermoplastic gutta percha. The difference here is that the fins are filled with a non-shrinkable, non-washable cement, whereas in vertical condensation they're filled with either ZOE sealer or gutta percha, both of which are inferior in properties to bioceramics. Essentially, in the age of bioceramic cements, as sealers or fillers, if you will, we should really ask ourselves the following question. What is so special about gutta percha? Well, I argue that bioceramics are superior to thermoplastic gutta percha in every way. And if you use them in the rewold endo design technique, which we call hydraulic condensation, the seal comes from bioceramics while the gutta percha master cone uh, fulfills really two main functions or objectives. First, it helps control the bioceramic to apex predictably, avoiding underfills and overfills, basically. And the second is it makes this tooth retreatable by providing a wide path of gutta percha through the main gutta percha cone for retreatment or revision in the future should it be needed. Okay, as you saw, both hydraulic condensation and vertical condensation can push the material hydraulically into these lateral canals. And the difference is in vertical condensation, you end up uh, filling the lateral canals primarily with sealer, which is either a resin or a ZOE-based sealer that could potentially wash out in the future. In the case of hydraulic condensation, you fill the lateral canals with uh, a non-resorbable bioceramic uh, material that will set to hydroxyapatite. So that it ends up being a main difference. Of course, it doesn't mean that you can achieve great success rates with vertical condensation. Um, it's just a little bit of a simpler method of having hydraulic condensation which can also allow you to have a non-absorbable material in the lateral canals compared to vertical condensation that can potentially wash out over time. So this was a case I just wanted to share with you that I shared this morning. Uh, hydraulic condensation uh, can produce enough hydraulics to fill in lateral canals and fins. Uh, it's just that you would need to use the main cone that is matched that creates the synchronicity with this technique. And uh, uh, that's basically it. I'll be showing some more cases and again on in terms of retreatment and various aspects of hydraulic condensation, which I hope will be useful to you. For Reward Endo, I'm Ali Nase, and let's save some teeth. Time is